This is Sky News Real Estate. Welcome back. You're watching Sky News Real Estate. Well, having a pool is a fabulous selling feature of a property or a spa for that matter as well. But as of the end of April, vendors and buyers in New South Wales need to be aware of some new safety requirements. Everyone knows you need a fence around the pool, but now sellers need a certificate of compliance to show that the barrier is up to scratch. Well, to find out some more about the new requirements and how this impacts the sale of properties in New South Wales, we're joined by Rob Guthrie, the president of Spa. Baza, the Swimming Pool and Spa Association of New South Wales and ACT, and also a director of the National Body too. Rob, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. On. Good morning. Because um, obviously, I mean, you, we all know you need a fence around yes. a pool. So what has changed as of the end of April in New South Wales? When you transact real estate, when you buy, when you sell, when you lease, you've got to have a certificate of compliance that proves that your pool meets the standards, that mm. there are no faults with the barriers, there are no climbing hazards, everything works, gates closed, resuscitation charts are displayed, and that is an essential element of a contract to release. How much does it cost? I, as a pool person, I think, how much more is this going to cost to get someone to come out and give us a certificate? It varies. There's a mandated fee at councils. Private certifiers are probably a little bit more expensive. So hundreds? Probably a bit or... quicker. Hundreds, not thousands. Oh, good Lord. Not much. I, mean, I know, I know that. Good Lord. <laughs> another, another something to do. What do you find? I mean, it, you know, when you're going out to inspect and, and see if a property is, is up to, to scratch, if there's a sale happening, I mean, what do you sort of generally find where they're, they're sort of failing to meet compliance? The figures that the association is keeping um, and other bodies suggest that nearly 90% of pools are failing the first inspection. Generally it's lack of maintenance, generally it's quite minor things. People haven't been forced to consider their uh, pool barriers for a long time, it's just there and they, they leave it. Now they go out and we find that things have moved, gates don't quite close without a kick or a lift, the resuscitation charts have been cooked in the sun and faded and cracked. Gardens wash away under fences and you wind up with gaps too big. There are very simple things people can do to check to make sure they're up to, up to scratch um, so that you can get through it in one inspection. Um, there's a lot of information on the SPARSA website, fact sheets and guides. They reference the Australian standard. They show the diagrams that allow you to calculate what a non-climbable zone is, what constitutes a hazard in those zones, the things that you need. It's, it's simple stuff, but because people haven't had to think about it for a while. A lot of them have just gone under the radar, as it were. Mm. So it's, as you were saying, it's triggered by a sale in uh, New South Wales, but uh, if it's that important, why is it not mandated everywhere all the time anyway? Why is it...? Everyone is required to have a compliant pool barrier. Yeah. There's nothing new in, in the regulations in terms of what you're required to do. Yeah. What's different is that you're required to prove it, prove it. when you sell it or when you lease it. So, I mean, if you're the vendor and perhaps, you know, you need to sell, you don't have the money to fix up what needs to be done, is it going to hold up the sale of property? The contract is not complete without a certificate issued from the New South Wales Swimming Pool Register. So the agent, until he has a certificate, does not have a complete contract, he cannot commence marketing. You can get a certificate of non-compliance, which details what the, the fails are. Um, that can be included in the contract of sale Compliance. and that's True. effectively a disclosure statement so you hand the liability to rectify and certify onto your purchaser. What is the situation in other states, WA, Queensland? Um, they started a, a regime similar to this sometime in the past and they're now to the point where they have mandatory inspections every three or four years. I think it's three years in WA and four years in Queensland or vice versa. Mm. But every pool has to be inspected um, on a rolling basis. Huge so, number of pools. I mean, I can't imagine the size of such a, an undertaking. There's a lot of pools. Thousands. It would be thousands of pools. Hundreds of thousands. Do you think oh, that you'll Lord. see that in, say, New South Wales, these, the, the requirements go further so that, you know, we have the situation in New South Wales, like in WA and Queensland, where everyone needs to have the certificate of compliance? The government has undertaken a review of the regulations. There was a report done last year which is being considered by local government. Uh, we don't know what's in that. We're told it's going to be released in the second half of this year and that may or may not be included in that. We wait to see. Mm. And other states and territories, I mean, could you see sort of tougher rules coming in? 
I think it's, yes, a natural progression. I think the other states will probably start something similar yeah. in time. Yeah. Um, it just, I guess, the level of awareness, too, of these new rules in New South Wales in particular, what are you finding? I mean, they've only obviously just come in place. The awareness wasn't as good as it should be. When it came in, there was a reasonable amount of panic, particularly with people with properties on the market, mm. that all of a sudden, midway through their auction campaigns, had to go and do something to get it right. Mm. Um, I think the awareness has gone out now. I think agents, conveyances, solicitors, which is probably the, the trigger, to get the uh, the homeowners to act, um, they're pretty much aware. If you were caught without a, without a fence, not in the transaction stage, but if you're caught with a with a non-compliant fence, mm -hmm. what happens to you? Councils, local authorities have always been able to carry out random inspections. Um, as a consequence of that, they can issue orders, raise mm -hmm. fines. Yep. What and the fines are up to. Fines can be a couple of thousand dollars if it's very bad and you probably if they came back and you hadn't done it. I don't think they'd yeah, um, yeah. attack you too badly the first time, but the second they might. <laughs> yeah. And it, what, five and a half thousand dollars, something around that mark, up to that? Sort of it, it varies from uh, council to council. In the initial stages, I think most would give a direction to rectify and comply. And if that was carried out, everything would be fine. If you didn't comply with the directions, yeah. that's when you'd be up for fines. Can they just come onto your property and have a look? or do they Councils have, to have the right to do random inspections. Um, they do give notice, but yeah. ultimately they can come in, yeah. So they can come on your property and go down to the backyard and have a look? Yes. That's amazing. How, how long <laughs> no, no. Too, does it take to, to get the certificate of compliance? You know, if you're sort of thinking about selling, you think, oh, I need to get this done. How, how Once you've got it, we've had it inspected, the certificate can be issued virtually straight away. It's an online process. It's done by the certifier on the swimming pool register and the certificate is, is issued as a, a PDF. It lives on the pool register. It's a public document. Anyone can download it. And that's attached to whatever contracts leases you may need. Mm. Now, of course, landlords too, as yes. you mentioned. I mean, they, whenever they're leasing a property, is that when it's triggered as well to make sure that they have... Correct. The... They've got to have a certificate of compliance for every lease. Um, you cannot go with a certificate of non-compliance because you can't hand the liability on to the tenant. Mm. Um, in stratas and community titles there's been a little bit of confusion uh, because of the language that's been used in some of the releases. It talks of exemptions for strata. And the exemption is not exempting the swimming pool, it's exempting the vendor or the landlord from attaching the certificate to their lease or contract. They rely on the common property having the compliance certificate. Right, and the I mean, they always have body to corporate, have... The owner's Which corporation. The fire yep. regulations and all that sort of thing. Body... Correct. Yeah. So they've always had to have that. There's been a three-year mandatory inspection program on Strata's running since 2013. Uh -huh. They have to have a current certificate at all times. And for landlords as well? That covers the swimming pool in the common property. For, for a landlord, once he has a certificate, that is good for three years. Mm -hmm. um, if he's continuing to rent the property in three years' time, he needs to have it renewed. Right, so same goes for obviously... Um, people buying a property if they're looking to sell. Yeah, if they sell, if they buy and sell within three years, they can rely on the certificate they have. Yep. Beyond three years, they need to have it redone. Wow, so important too, obviously. Isn't it, it is. It is important. Yeah. Um, look, thank you so much for coming on. Just finally, if you could just wrap it together for us. So, what are the top tips at the moment about what pool owners in New South Wales need to know? They need to know that they've got to have, they've got to enclose the pool with a barrier. It has to be compliant with the the regulations, the Australian standard, all that information can be taken off the SPARSA website. Um, but simple things, don't have pot plants and barbecues next to the fence because they create climbing hazards. Don't have a gate that needs a lift or a kick because it'll never pass. Make sure your resuscitation chart's good. If you've got windows or anything that open from the house into the swimming pool, they've got to be limited to 100 mils. They're easy things to check, but they're often overlooked. Mm, it's a long list. It, just one quick final question, mm. which I meant to ask you earlier too, was, you know, we see these beautiful pictures of those wet edge pools. Yeah, well, exactly. I was pools going to bring that up too. Yes. Yeah. It's, I mean, what do you do? Do they, like, how does that work? With wet, vanishing edge pools are a, um, a bit of an anomaly. They're recognised in the Australian standard, but the Building Code of Australia in 2013 um, decided that the structure of a pool could not be used as a barrier. So, so if the wet edge drops off six metres, some gorgeous wet edge drops off, you've still got to have a fence at the bottom of where it You have to enclose the pool on four sides with a barrier, and the barrier cannot be the pool wall. They're is, the rules. Is that um, often one that you come across where people... Think Sydney's hilly. There are a lot of yes, exactly. pools and it's built that way. And the ideal place to put one of those wet edge pools is on the edge of a drop. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, yes, they're out there and people don't like it, but they're, they're the requirements. Because it seems ridiculous. 
that's, I mean, that would be why. <laughs> you know it's ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> but, it, it's, but that is one area, do you think, where people uh, think that they're covered. But they, Well, they were. But a lot of these people Never were approved before. prior to 2013. Yes, exactly. Right. So, OK. And they're not now. So something to be very aware of. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you so much, Rob. That's been really interesting. Lots to, to be mindful of there. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Rob Guthrie there from Spaza, New South Wales and ACT. We need to go to...